In the Pacific Northwest, we currently have five functioning oil terminals or refineries, with two large ones proposed. If either the Vancouver Terminal or the Hope William Grays Harbor Terminal are approved, oil by rail will increase dramatically throughout the Northwest. Much of this oil is coming from the Bakken oil fields of North Dakota, which stretches into Canada. There have been 33 major train derailments in North America in the past three years. The government's latest response to derailments of bomb trains carrying volatile, blocking crude oil and ethanol may help limit impacts in the aftermath of an accident, but do nothing to prevent the next fiery derailment. With all of this risk piling up as evidence, and the fossil fuel industry only poised to increase that chance more than seven times over, we should be prepared. There was a time when people were ready for big explosions. What we all must learn to do. You and you and you and you. Duck and cover. Be sure and remember what Bert the Turtle just did, friends, because every one of us must remember to do the same thing. That's what this film is all about. Duck and cover. This is an official civil defense film produced in cooperation with the Federal Civil Defense Administration and in consultation with the Safety Commission of the National Education Association. The nuclear attacks that people were preparing for in the 1960s with exercises like duck and cover may not have been sufficient to actually protect people from the long-term health effects of exposure to nuclear radiation. But at least they had some idea of what to do in the event of a large explosion. On June 3rd of this year in Mosier, Oregon, a 95-car oil train derailed. 16 cars went off the tracks and four of them ignited. There have been other derailments, some that resulted in leaked product, but received much less media attention. Regulators continue to fail to address the main causes of fiery oil train accidents. The excessive weight of oil trains that often include 100 tank cars, deteriorating track infrastructure, and unwarranted train speeds. The solutions 
that have been proposed include track improvements, electric brakes, new cars, and reports of cargo. One of the biggest promises made is in training more emergency first responders. Twenty-five million Americans live in the blast zone. Are there enough emergency first responders to cover that level of risk? How many of these are volunteers? And what is the training involved? The focus is on the emergency. In 2015, the city of Vancouver did a study on the effectiveness of responses to large tanker or pipeline spills along the southern coast of British Columbia. Collecting and removing oil from the sea surface is a challenging, time-sensitive, and often ineffective process, even in calm water. Why aren't people being prepared for a large oil spill and or related train fire? If the Port of Vancouver terminal is approved, oil by rail will increase from about 1,000 trains per year to over 7,000 carrying oil through the Columbia River Gorge. And cover. Be sure and remember what Bert the Turtle just did, friends, because every one of us must remember to do the same thing. That's what this film is all about. Duck and cover. This is an official civil defense film produced in cooperation with the Federal Civil Defense Administration and in consultation with the Safety Commission of the National Education Association. Produced by Archer Productions, Incorporated. Hey, Bert, come on out and meet all these nice people, please. Oh, all right. We really can't blame you.